Hi Flosstube, it's July 4th, 2017, and this is my very first Flosstube video. My name is Jen, and my channel is called Felicity Stitches. I'm going to take a little bit of time to introduce myself, uh, and then go through my whips and a tiny bit of haul. So, I don't really know it feels awkward to do these videos and start talking to you like just a random stranger like you just come up to somebody and go hi my name's Jen I like to stitch and I want to show you all the things that I do like it seems crazy to do that uh, and yet I have watched hundreds of floss tube number one videos and everybody seems to make it through and uh, so I thought I'd do it myself. I, the first video has to come at some point, and the hardest part is starting, right? If you wait for conditions to be perfect, you're never going to do it. So here we go. Fourth of July, Independence Day. Let's make a video. Uh, let's see. I've been watching, I've been watching Floss Tube videos since the fall of 2015, and I started graduate school in the late spring early summer of 2015. I'm a registered nurse and I'm going back to school to become a certified registered nurse anesthetist. Yes that is a mouthful and it's super freaking intense. I have no time and I tend to stress anyway so I was looking for something to help me sort of decompress, de-stress, and I don't know what made me think of stitching. I think maybe I had, um, I think maybe I had stitching, sorry I got an itch, I think maybe I had some stitching somewhere up here and um, I found it and I thought, oh man, maybe I'll try that, maybe that'll help me relax me, take my mind off of it, because you know, it gives you something else to focus on. And then, for whatever reason, my stitching might have asked me to do like the pattern might have asked me to do some sort of special stitch or something and I googled it and a YouTube video popped up and what there's YouTube videos of cross stitch well the last time I did a cross stitch was in my late teens early 20s and it was very country and I think there was a a goose and it was wearing a bonnet or a dress or who the hell knows but that's not my taste anymore and I just assumed that cross stitch remained you know precious moments and teddy bears not that there's anything wrong with those things there is not uh, but that would not be my personal taste for things I would want to stitch on if I'm gonna spend all of the time required to create a stitched piece out of a pattern I want something that I would like to look at on a regular basis whether it's a pillow or something I hang on my wall or what so I hadn't seen something like that I hadn't been paying attention uh, in a long time so who did I see I want to say my first floss tuber was mrs. milky bar kid uh, and she's from Europe and she doesn't make floss tube videos anymore um, but her videos are amazing if you haven't watched mrs. Milky Bar kid she has a beautiful English accent and she teaches you how to do some things and she's wonderful and after I found mrs. Milky Bar kid I found uh, Mackenzie of the lovely array and just all but fell in love with her she's about the cutest thing ever and we actually became friends because of floss tube so she was my very first uh, stitching friend that I ever made and then um, I found Carolyn Mazio's videos and she doesn't make videos now but I do believe in the future she will be coming back to that at least that's the word on the street that I heard uh, from somebody else somebody some other floss tuber but 
her videos are just amazing as well and she has a lovely presence um, on camera so I learned I learned so much about stitching from them uh, about fabrics and that sort of thing I had only stitched on Ada and I, like I said I had only stitched like those little plastic Walmart ornaments but they weren't that Ben Franklin was where I got my little tiny ornaments like teddy bears holding Christmas wreaths or a baseball or a football that sort of thing that's there wasn't a whole lot out that you could that you could stitch so I found these videos and I got a little bit obsessed so then I did a Google search and I found a couple of local needle workshops by me one of which I've adopted is you know my second home and I, it just hasn't stopped from there I bought a just cross stitch magazine because I was like give me a pattern and I will show you some of my finishes from from that time period but um, it was great and so I've followed floss tubers and I've tried really hard to be an active member of the community by following people on Instagram and following on floss tube and actually commenting as much as possible on your videos and um, because I feel you know when you watch somebody you really feel like you get to know them or know of them what they want you to know but I don't really feel even leaving comments and trying to be forthcoming and whatever it's it's hard to feel like you have an actual relationship with this per like an online relationship with a person if you're if there's not I don't know I just wanted to reciprocate in a more similar fashion I know that I've had many floss tubers tell me that I am a part of the floss tube community because I actively engage with floss tubers but I just wanted to be a floss tuber myself like I wanted I wanted to be one of you guys so that's what I'm doing and you know it may be that only four people ever watch this and three of them never come back uh, needless to say it will at least give me a opportunity to create like a video diary of sorts where I can look back and and see what I was working on and what I was thinking or things that were going on in my life uh, that were connected to special pieces and that sort of thing so that's my hope I don't know how often I'm going to make these because, like I said, school is crazy. And I'm halfway through the process of prepping for my boards. And that's just only going to get worse, only going to get more intense. We've finished most of the didactic portion of our classes, so now we're just in uh, clinical rotations. So we do just board prep and clinical work. So I'm in the hospital, in the operating room, four or five days a week. Uh, doing anesthesia so uh, where am I going what's my next thing let me look at my let me look at my notes so a little bit a little bit more about me I am a mother of two small children a girl and a boy and a wife and I live in my mother-in-law's attic which she very kindly and very generously renovated so that my family could move in here and live comfortably in her home uh, while I go to school, which is like a three year, two and a half year process. Um, so I've tried to make this space as comfortable as possible for me to study and sleep and stress out and now make floss tube videos. Uh, I'm not super tech savvy so I'm gonna try really hard to make videos that don't need a whole lot of editing and um, I don't know how successful I will be at that at first especially being kind of nervous and not really maybe having a flow or whatever but um, I will do my best and if you have any tips or suggestions for me uh, please feel free to leave a comment below or send me a message and um, I'd love to hear any you know advice or supportive comments that you have um, I've been stitching 
on and off for about 36 years. I did the math. Um, and mostly more off than on, actually. But it used to be a huge part of my previous career. Um, and I'll tell you more about that you know, in another video. But now it's not a job for me. It's a hobby. It's a passion. And I absolutely love it. Uh, I want to stitch all the time. I think you guys can relate to that. Unfortunately, with everything else that's going on in life, that's not, that's not really an option. But um, I think once I'm done with school and I don't have that responsibility and that stress weighing me down, I will be able to take the time that I spent outside of what would be, you know, a normal work day that I spend studying and that sort of thing. And I can find a way to uh, divide that up amongst spending time with my family and being a responsible adult and then also getting to uh, do my hobby, which is stitching. Um, so I think what we'll do next is uh, talk about my whips. So what I've tried to do is organize them in the order from the oldest whip to the newest whip. And I'm going to have a sip of coffee here because um, like Tracy P says, I love coffee. I love everything about coffee. I love the way it tastes. I love the way it smells. I love the way it makes me feel. I love holding coffee mugs in my hands. It is, it's my drug of choice. I love coffee. Love it. And I'm going to try really hard not to make weird slurpy noises. Okay, so whips oldest to newest so the first whip that I have here is the perennial border it's by the drawn thread it's a why can you tell me please why we have such poor poor pictures of these stitching things to go by when we're trying to make our choices Maybe it's a good thing because I would probably honestly buy far more stuff than I could ever stitch in a lifetime if everything was photographed true to life. Um, but here is the drawn thread. This is the perennial border. I'll try to get in a little bit closer so you can see it. Uh, if, you, if you follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is Felicity Stitches. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen progress of this. It is gorgeous. This is a beautiful piece. It does have specialty stitches. I actually am stitching this as sort of a very informal stitch along with my girl Mackenzie. And we're both, we're getting there. Um, but we got to the part with the Lazy Daisies and neither one of us love Lazy Daisies. I don't, I mean, I'm not horrible at them. I just... I just don't like them, let's just be honest. Some things I really like, lazy daisies, not so much. Okay, so here's my piece. And I just have to finish this, this little bit. This is uh, asters. And then I have to do this part of the border and I'll be done. And we're just sort of pacing ourselves because, you know, we want to finish together. I chose this, it's like a raw natural linen, um, and I don't know the count, but my guess, my guess is going to be 28, maybe 32. Uh, I just started stitching on linen in, when I started stitching, 2015, and it's amazing. I love stitching on linen. If you, not that there's anything wrong with Ada, because there's not, but if you um, have never stitched on linen, and you think you would like to try it, I really think it gives stitched pieces um, a beautiful, a beautiful look. And I think it's not nearly as hard as you would think it, you would think it is. If you just practice, find a little practice, take a scrap of your linen, buy some linen, cut off a scrap, put in some stitches, do like practice cross stitches, practice, um, 
fractional stitches is so much easier to do fractional stitches on linen um, and you will see that it is it is fun to stitch on so let me see if I can give you I've got close-ups I don't know if I'm focusing or not do you see that white work I love love that white work and that's why I went with the the raw linen because I felt like I really wanted the white work to pop and I didn't think when I looked at it compare you know when I compared it to the to the picture here I don't think the white work pops as much I want you to see the white work so I tried to pick something that would show off all the things and then here's a little interesting tidbit so these words here um, my mother has has passed away she was I was an only child raised by a single mom and she is without a doubt the most influential person in my life that I had ever met she's my hero and she's who I want to be when I grow up and she was amazing and I loved her more than anything I'm gonna stop talking about her because I'll start to cry but um, she was working on a quilt for me an applique quilt which I have all the pieces I don't know how to do applique I will learn at some point but not right now and she was appliquing with DMC and I have her box of DMC and so what I did was my mom was an avid gardener so I was kind of stitching this sort of as an in memoriam piece for her and then I found this blue thread right here I don't know if you can see it really well uh, but I just love the color and I think that it really stands out on the fabric and so I used my mom's thread on my piece uh, because I'm just as sentimental as the rest of y'all and I love I love it when I love it when things like that happen when you have things that are sentimental to you look here's my those are supposed to be French knots I believe they're colonial knots I'm not really sure of the difference but I think I learned it from Mary Corbett on YouTube and I think I I think I do French knots if somebody knows the difference between French knots and colonial knots I would like to know so leave a comment below or Mary Rose uh, you you could totally tell me the difference between colonial and French knots maybe I'll send you a message um, Mary Rose just did the greatest video it's like a fourth of july sort of tribute inspired by vana like just the sweetest video and she talks about um i'm trying to find her channel so i can tell you what it's called where is it sorry bear with me it's worth it Mary Rose Stitch Bliss Corner um, her video is called floss tube number 26 Vanna George James and Betsy and I just love I love her I love her channel I love listening to her and um, she is an educator at heart she is that is I mean she is a teacher of things of all things uh, and she said when she started her channel if you want to know something I've got all kinds of time I can look it up for you and I thought this is my kind of woman so I have finally found something to ask her I'm gonna ask her about that okay drawn thread do you guys ever feel like you're talking incessantly about stuff nobody wants to hear sometimes I think that right now I'm feeling that way okay my next oldest whip is let me get back to my thing here my next oldest whip is Quaker stitches by Jeanette Douglas and I am doing the color version here but Jeanette Douglas has extremely good taste in fibers and so all of her charts call for um, really really beautiful expensive 
like Gloriana, MPI Silks, uh, Belsois. And I just, you know, I'm living hand to mouth right now on student loans. And I only have so much money allocated for stitching stash. And I, I wanted to stitch this. So what I did was I went to, uh, we have a craft store called Pack Tans. And I went to Pack Tans with this pattern and I just tried to, I just tried to replicate the colors as close to possible, as close as I possibly could in DMC. I think I've done pretty well. Some things are a little bit brighter. Honestly, this piece taught me that DMC is not my favorite. And I'll show you how far I've gotten along on it. My daughter really likes this piece, so I'm going to give it to her when it's all done. Here it is. And this one has been on my Instagram as well. I haven't worked on it in a while because I've had a few starts. This border here, this blue satin stitch border, gave me freaking fits. Because, can you see, look at this right here, do you see that? That is a pattern thing that Jeanette put in there, thank you very much, lady. Uh, so, you think you're buzzing along, everything is just fine, you're, you know, making your little beautiful satin stitched, they're basically like cloister blocks, and then you get to where it's supposed to meet up and it doesn't meet up. And why doesn't it meet up? Because you put a full even space here and then you put a full even space here and now not only does your border not add up, but something else is wrong. Oh crap, you did a wrong space between your letters. This is the story of my life. So I am, I'm a perfectionist. I'm type A. I have a hard time letting things go and I need to finish stuff and I want stuff to be right and I'm working on that, okay? And stitching is a really good exercise in patience and humility and anti-perfectionism, I guess. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I, of course, I hate the word frog. I um, unstitched, I don't like the word unpicked either. I don't know why I pick it doesn't work for me. I unstitched or I took the stitches out um, or ripped out uh, a big bunch of it, like a ton of the border and a ton of the, the alphabet because I just wanted it to be, I just wanted it to be right. And you know, when you have borders, there's, there's certain pieces that you can stitch. And if you're off a little bit here and there, it's not going to make a difference. Nobody's going to notice if this Quaker motif is three stitches or five stitches away from the other Quaker motif. But when you have a border involved, that's when things get real. And that's when things have to match up. And since I've had this issue, I've seen more people post on Instagram where they're like, whew, that moment you realize your border's going to match up. And I think, girl, I know exactly, or boy, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, let me tell you here. This is a, a needle minder that I purchased from my girl McKenna. Uh, Stitching and Sequins, who has an online Amazon shop called Sincere Stitches. I'm not really an I'm not really a needle minder person. Okay. I like the idea of needle minders. I am certainly all for collecting stuff if that's your thing. If you want to collect things, that's great. Um, the thing about needle minders that I have found is that I feel like they warp my fabric. They pull on my fabric, and I don't like that. So, I have two needle minders that I purchased from McKenna. I have one I tried to make myself, which was kind of a miserable failure. And then, I don't have any more. And honestly, there's only, there's one kind of needle minder 
that I would really like to have. Uh, Abby Bella Stitch used to make needle minders. She used to have a, have a needle minder shop. And she used to make these agate slices magnets, needle minders. And when I saw, I saw Emily C. of Eclectic Possessions had one, and I was like, oh, I have to have that. I have to have that as a needle minder. It's gorgeous. It's perfect. It's totally me. And I went to get one. She doesn't make them anymore. They're all sold out. And I'm just sad. Now, you're going to tell me, oh, but somebody else makes them now. Yeah, I looked at those, and they're not the same quality of Abby Bella's at all. When you look at Abby's, you cannot see the magnet through the agate slice. I don't know why that is. I don't know what she's done. I've never seen the back of them. But all you see is the beauty of the agate slice. And I wanted one with, like, the gold on the outside. So beautiful. Like, purples, teals. She didn't make them anymore. So, no more needle minders for me. Unless, you know, a miracle happens and I find one. Alright, so, the next... Ah, uh, the next project is my Hardanger Along. Now, I know some of you are doing this. I know that, uh, a, is it a Stitch in Time? No, a Stitch Too Far. Ingeborg. I love you, Ingeborg. Ingeborg is working on this. She actually just showed this in her video. I am behind. Go figure. And, which is funny because it actually stitches up super super fast um, the person who is doing this hardanger along is stitching with a smile Nina her channel is stitching with a smile and she is a wonderful teacher and she's doing this in pieces parts and it will be up in perpetuity so if you're not ready to start learning hardanger right now you don't have to it'll it's always going to be there um but honestly it's really not difficult so i don't know what's holding you back you can literally learn hardanger with ten dollars and ten minutes that's all i'm gonna say that's all i'm gonna say ten dollars ten minutes you're probably good to go so here's my piece cardboard behind it. Still working on that part. Here's my piece. I am using DMC number 5 Pearl Cotton in 4065 for the cloister blocks and the um, satin stitched stars Oop, and that sort of thing and then the other the other the other color that I chose is this DMC number eight pearl cotton in four four one five and while I'm holding this ball of pearl cotton let me just say I sort of wish that all stitching threads came in balls like this. You know how the Valdani does? And I, I've never tried Valdani. I've not heard the most positive things about it, but um, it just comes off easy. You don't have to worry about it getting bent like you do when you bobbinate. I feel like it wouldn't be that difficult to store these little bad boys um, or put them you know, on a ring some way. I don't know. I just, I like, it's compact and it's in a little ball and the little balls are cute and I just like little balls, okay? That's where we're at on that one. Feel free to leave a comment about that. So that's my hard anger along. And that, let's see, I'm getting off track. So my Jeanette Douglas, oop, let me tell you one more time. Jeanette Douglas, it was started on January 7th, 2017, 
and it is stitched two over two on 28 count Irish linen by DMC and I do not recommend this stuff you can get it at the big box stores whatever it looks pretty it's a pain in the butt to stitch with um, I mean you have to have near perfect tension all the time like, don't be angry and try to stitch this don't be tired and try to stitch this uh, don't be sitting with bad posture and try to stitch this on this linen because it just it pulls the warp and the weft and then it just it looks it looks bad it's a real wumpy weave so not my favorite uh, if you hadn't if you hadn't uh, figured that out yet and then this it, this hard anger piece was started on April 28th 2017 and it is stitched on 22 count white hard anger fabric uh, I think that I got it either Michaels Pacatans I think I got it at Michaels Maybe Joann's. And like I said, uh, number eight pearl cotton. Boop. That little ball, that little gray ball fell on the floor in 415. And this is uh, number five pearl cotton in 4065. Okay. I'm sorry if this is boring. The pattern is a free pattern. I'm going to show it to you, the hard hanger. Uh, you can get it on... Um, Nordic Needle. It's a free pattern. You don't have to pay for the pattern. All you get though is this little, just one corner. That's all you get. And uh, But Nina teaches you like how to break it down, how to go through it, how to pick what comes first. But literally, this is, that's all you get. Here's your free pattern. Figure it out. Rock it out. Um, which is good. We have a lot of people on here that are good at um, that are good at making decisions. Sometimes I'm not so good at that. Uh, okay, so my next piece is probably my favorite that I'm stitching on right now. Coffee break. Okay, so my next piece is Eleanor Rigby by Blackbird Designs. So this is what the glare. This is what the um, thing looks like. And it's kind of a, it's part of their Magical Mystery series, Magical Mystery Tour series. I love it. So, here's the story behind this. Look, it's also called, if you look at the front, it says, Eleanor Rigby and Sweet Baby. Well, here's Sweet Baby. It's a birth sampler. So, coincidentally, my, uh, my cousin, who is older, um, and his wife, who is also older, have been trying to have a baby and finally have been blessed uh, with a baby. So I'm super, 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 super excited for them. And I wanted to, I wanted to stitch them something. And you know, stitching things for other people is a big deal, right? Because it takes forever. It's not cheap. This is not a cheap hobby. Um, so if you're going to spend that kind of money and you're going to spend that, time, that kind of time and you're going to uh, work that hard to make it look nice and then finishing it is a whole nother cost and stress and whatever. So if you're going to do that for somebody, you want to make sure they're going to appreciate it. And I'm fortunate enough that my family is very, we're very sentimental people and we're very into, uh, I want to say like homespun crafts and stuff, but that's not, my aunt is a quilter, his mom, she's a quilter. My mother was a painter. Um, she painted that piece right there and she painted that piece right there. And I can show you some other things that she painted uh, if you're interested but she was a painter I told you she was working on an applique quilt for me my mother was a Renaissance woman basically as a single woman who was raising a daughter in the 70s no internet mind you she learned how to do things she learned how to do plumbing change the oil in her car she learned how to sail she's amazing so um, we come from that kind of a family my mom would make homemade gifts for everybody uh, she would paint things or whatever. 
uh, for people for Christmas and they are out every Christmas they're out every holiday some things are on the wall all year round it's just what my family does we cherish homemade gifts so I wanted to make I wanted to make him and his wife a homemade gift for their uh, little baby and um, I agonized over what to pick and I'm not really a traditional baby sampler person I'm way into samplers trust me but uh, baby samplers not so much they're very um, pink and blue and baby carriages and I just you know if I'm gonna work that hard to stitch something I don't want it to get stuck in a garage sale when the kid turns five I maybe want them to keep it on their walls so I changed some of the colors around but this is this is my piece and I made this Q snap um, off of a pattern that I found on line through a Facebook page called I want to say PVC frames or DIY PVC frames if I can figure out how to write stuff in the box below I will um, send a link but just message me and I can look it up for you if you're interested so here's my version it is stitched on I don't know how great the color is it's um, I started it on May 28th 2017 and I'm stitching it on 36 count vintage lentil by Lakeside Linens and I'm stitching one over two so I was inspired to go up higher in counts I'd never this is the highest count highest count fabric I think I've ever stitched on and I was inspired to do this by Nicole's Needlework I don't know if you guys are familiar but she is like a sampler s she's she's amazing she stitches beautiful sampler samplers and she stitches them all on very high high count fabric and she does that mostly I think to be a economical with her thread not that that's a high priority for her I'm I'm not sure but um, you only have to use one thread and if you only have to use one thread then you don't have to agonize about how the top two threads are laying which believe me as a perfectionist I've been doing for the last two and a half years trying to figure out how to get those top two threads to lay perfectly every single time and I haven't figured it out yet I have tried railroading I have tried a laying tool I have a trolley needle that I'm pretty adept at and that's what I used to get my satin stitches for the Jeanette Douglas piece to lay perfectly but um, the thing about the trolley needle and the laying tool is I haven't figured out how to do two-handed stitching and use one of those tools um, I've tried Vana's technique of the up and down don't move your needle down with the point up with the eye and that's the closest that I've gotten actually um, it does take some learning actually that Jeanette Douglas piece is is my uh, Vana stitch technique a study in Vana's stitch technique piece so I'm stitching that piece entirely in her technique and have actually gone to stitching that way full-time so that's how I stitch even though this is only one thread I that's how I stitch it saves a lot of time um, it saves my wrists I don't want to get carpal tunnel I got a lot of years of stitching left and I need to be able to stitch all those years I can't have things I can't be doing things that are gonna hurt my hands and keep me from being able to stitch because I've got plans people I've got a lot of things I need to stitch all the things as Vana would say so this is on vintage lentil by Lakeside Linens so it's a mottled green I don't know if you can tell and then I changed the thread colors from the uh, original called for I'll hold up what was originally called for so you can see and the reason I did that is because I'm not really a it's sort of a mauvey pinky I don't know those just really aren't my colors and I didn't think that they would be my cousin and his wife's colors either so I went with something that was more uh, 
I don't know, something I could see hanging on a wall for a long time. I really wanted something sort of timeless. So that's what I went with. That's how far I am. I love it. I love stitching on this piece. Oh, and I had posted, I had posted this in Instagram. I did these leaves in the called for greens, variegated flosses. I love variegated flosses. I love over dyed flosses. Um, I'm a thread snob. I'll admit that. And, um, I don't care who knows it. I'm plenty fine with DMC. Someday I want to learn how to dye, over dye DMC myself so that I can make threads that I want, but I just feel like they're really flat. The colors are really flat and I like the texture and the interest that you get with over dyeds, hand dyeds, variegated threads. So I prefer to stitch with those. That being said, I stitched all of this green stuff in the called for colors and it looked like a dead plant. It looked like nobody watered this thing in a year. And I thought, I can't, I can't give them a dead plant stitched up for their baby. So all I had was I had DMC on hand in greens that I thought would look good and I think I think it looks fantastic. I love the green. I think it looks really good. So, you know, sometimes you can be a snob and sometimes you can be humbled into realizing that you don't have to be a snob. And then my final whip, which I started on my birthday, is a chatelaine. And I'm going to show you here. I have, <coughs> excuse me, I have a picture of what it is supposed to look like stitched up and I can already tell you that mine does not look anything like this for whatever reason. Sorry about the glare. It's Micro Mini 01 is the name of the piece. And this is from the internet from chatelainestitchers.blogstop.com from May of 2011. So I if you if you know of me on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, I love chatelaines. I love them with every fiber of my being. I feel like chatelaines, Martina Rosenberg is a genius and her pieces are stunning. They are works of art and I want to stitch them. I want, I don't want to stitch them all, okay? Because there are other things that I love, but I want to stitch a lot of them. And so, if you've ever looked at Chatelaines, if you've ever priced them out, they are not cheap. The pattern's not cheap. Uh, the supplies are not cheap. So, you're looking at a huge investment. And my thought process was, I know some people are like, man, ah, just dive off into the deep end and start stitching a three foot chatelaine for your first piece. Well, that's all well and good, but being a perfectionist, I can't do that. I need to practice first. So I purchased a practice piece and then being an insane perfectionist, I kitted this up and then I sat on it for eight months because I didn't feel like I was ready to stitch it as good as it needed to be stitched. I, that, I know that doesn't make any sense. If y'all could tell me how you get over that, I would really appreciate it. Because some of you people just, you just stitch. I'm just stitching and it comes out gorgeous. It comes out gorgeous. So I would really like to know what, what it is that you do that causes that to happen. Here's my start. I don't know if you can see it and I will do my best. Let me see if I can. This is on fabric that I dyed myself using Farm Girl Stitchers version of low immersion technique and I believe it's just pearl gray 
writ from Walmart. I love it. I love the way that fabric turned out and I am excited. This is all one over one. So it's 28 count. It's 28 count and this centerpiece is just one over one and I'm looking at I'm looking at the piece I see online and I don't know. I mean, I did a lot of converting because I wasn't 100% in love with all the pink and green. So we'll see how it turns out. Hopefully it, it looks as pretty in my mind as I imagine it. Um, okay, I think that's it for whips. Not a lot of whips. Um, haul. Next thing is haul. So, like I said, very limited budget, so not a lot of haul in my life, but um, sometimes you just gotta buy stuff, right? You need retail therapy. First thing I'm gonna show you is this really cute thing that my mother-in-law got for me. She recently went on her very first vacation all by herself, and she went to Colonial Williamsburg, and she purchased from Colonial Williamsburg uh, a fine needleworks designs created in America to honor our needlework heritage by the 2004 Colonial Williamsburg Foundation and what she got me was this it's a colonial pinball counted cross stitch kit and it comes with instructions and it comes with It's either 20 or 18 count Ada it looks like and these threads even a little needle it's a lot of green people I don't know how I feel about all that green I think that green is supposed to be that background I might not do that I might not make it dark like that I might just go with this so the, th the thing is is that I was like oh well where's the where's the pinball there's this thing, right? Your pins go, it's like a little pin cushion thing. Yeah, no, you really can't find that part. And the ones that you can find are sterling silver and they're over $120. Not for me. <laughs> so, I am going to, I think what I'll probably do my thoughts are that what I will do is I will stitch this and I will put it together something like this and I will use some sort of uh, finishing ribbon, rickrack, whatever. I'm sure bonna has got a good idea for what I could use on this. And then I'll turn it into, it'll be like a Christmas ornament. I'd like to do... I want to be like Bana and I want to have a tree that has stitchy stuff. I want to have like a tree in every part of my house and I want a lot of them to be trees with stitching on them <laughs> and they're going to be, I'm going to have seasonal stitching trees and it's just going to be amazing. So that's a goal. Okay, so that's the Colonial Williamsburg. Okay, here's another one that I got. So sometimes you see something and you're like, oh, I really like that and you look for it and you realize it's hard to find. And so then it becomes a mission, like you have to find it because it is so hard to find. And that happened uh, for me with this kit. I just saw it, I don't even know how. Um, just Nan, I like these, they're little butterflies. And as you can see right here, I have a botanical print, botanical style print, I don't know what you call that. There's another one just above it. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Yeah, there's another one just above it there. And um, I just like butterflies. My daughter likes butterflies. And I thought these were really pretty. And I thought, oh, I could stitch those up and put those in her room. I thought the colors were really beautiful. I love the little crowns. Not a big fan of the framing. I don't know what all this business is, whatever. Um, but... Pretty butterflies stitched on gray linen. I could do that. That's right up my alley. So, and just Nan, uh, things sometimes use 
beads, they use specialty stitches, and sometimes uh, sparkly threads and stuff. And I like all those things. I like beads, specialty stitches, and sparkly threads. So there you go. Okay, uh, more haul. So did you guys, anybody watch Eclectic Possessions? I love her. She's one of my, she's one of my tribe. She's one of my people. And, um, she showed, do you remember before Mania, which I did not do, I, the thought of Mania literally sends me into a panic attack. Um, and she did Mania to the nth degree this year. She did like super Mania, Mania on crack, uh, Ulta mania. I don't know. She, the ultimate mania. She was, she was a maniac. So, but she showed this and I was like, oh, that's really cute. I really like that. And I had told her when she was showing all of her whips and she's like, pick a whip. And I said, you should do this. It's so cute. That animal sampler, antique animal sampler is so cute. And then she started to stitch it. And you guys know Emily is pretty prolific at like picking colors her her color that part of her brain works she's like a Mozart with color honestly so I saw her stitching it and I was like okay well now I have to have it if you'll please share your conversion and she was kind enough to do that for me so I have her conversion I have the chart um, and someday I'm gonna sti I'm gonna kit it up and I'm gonna stitch it someday very soon. Look at this. Okay, so silly monster. Look at that business right there. That little alligator is so stinking cute. Cute little bunnies. Birds I love. Frogs love frogs. Cats. I mean, come on. I don't know what this. This is a weasel, people. It's a weasel. Don't you want to stitch a weasel? I want to, I'm, <laughs> come on. Squirrels, squirrels are good. Snake, spider. I don't know, I like it. I like everything about it and I love her colors. And I thought, you know what? This would look really cool in my son's room. I bet he'd really like that. And if he doesn't, then I'll hang it in my room. <laughs> so there you go. That's my antique animal sampler. And then this is a new one. I just got this. So I went to my, my LNS is called the Crafty U. I live in Cleveland. Uh, so my LNS is called the Crafty U and they do a wonderful thing where they have open stitch days or open stitch nights or they have stitch ins, whatever. Um, and it's great because I get to go and meet people that like to stitch and sometimes Stitching is great because it's something that you can do that's solitary, but it's also great because um, you can do it with other people, and I like that. People, people who understand you. So I found this. This is the latest from Beth Twist of Heartstring Samplery, and it's like a little, um, it's a book. It's called Once Upon a Summer Huswife. And I love all the little motifs down here. Uh, alphabets. I don't feel the need to stitch an alphabet on everything that I sew. So chances are what I'm going to do is repeat this border here, up here. Um, but I think I'm actually going to try to make this. So that's something that I got. And then, oh, this is going to be fun. This is the latest from Brenda Gervais and this is the summer schoolhouse lessons in and I looked up how to say this ABC Darian ABC Darian ABC Darian um, and the whole point of it is like a B C D Arian ABC Darian so it's literally like a type of stitching and it's going to be an over one series, I believe. And I think there's six parts 
And honestly, I love every single thing that this woman designs to the point where it's like a sickness. I have like five or six of her things. Um, farm, farm girl stitcher stitches a lot of her stuff. And I'm always like, Oh yeah, I love that. Oh yeah. I need to stitch. Oh yeah. I've got that. Uh, I love it. I love the color palette. I think it's beautiful. So she, her, her suggestion is to stitch on 28 count mushroom Lugana. I wasn't feeling that totally. So I got, um, cause I'm into the higher counts now, you know, I got this 32 count oat, oatmeal. I think it's 32 count oatmeal from uh, Legacy Linen, I want to say. If that's wrong, I will tell you. Uh, and then I've got all the called for threads. Gorgeous. I just like, this has a little more texture to it. It's not quite as flat. Mushroom Lagana is flat. It's, it's good, but it's just not. So I got that. Love that. Can't wait to start that. Gonna wait though, because as you can see, I got some stuff to do. So that's gonna wait just a little bit. And then um, I've got, oh, I got from, this was sent to me in the mail from Heather, who you know as at Sunshine Hev. And I had commented on this piece. I love this piece. This is in my LNS, right, you know, they hang samples everywhere. And this is right behind the girl at the counter. And it's just beautiful. Everything about it is beautiful. I love it so much. And I have wanted to stitch it since the fall of 2015 when I went into that store and I saw it and she's stitching it and I just would comment every time I saw her how beautiful it was and how much I loved it and she was kind enough to pass her stash to me uh, so I received this earlier this week and I am I am gonna do it in the called for in the Valdani threads the colors are beautiful I haven't purchased those yet but um, I'm a little nervous about it because I've heard negative things about Valdani threads breaking or knotting and I do not have time for that in my life. I need my stitching to work with me. Um, and the last little bit of haul that I got when I went to that, when I went to my stitcher Saturday night stitch in, she had, it was like a Christmas in July theme and you could buy grab bags that she had, um, she'd wrapped up like Christmas presents. They were only two fifty, and I think I spent maybe ten dollars twelve dollars and I got a ton of stuff and most of it I probably won't stitch right but there were enough things in there that I would stitch that it was totally worth it for me so here is here's the one thing I got I just love this it's called willow tree Inn, and it is a little sampler by uh, little house needleworks and what I love is the tree with the two blackbirds and the sheep. So I don't, Vana said in a video one time, she's like, you know, you don't have to stitch this whole thing. If this is what you love right here, just stitch that. That could be an ornament. That could be a flat fold. It doesn't have to be this huge thing. If houses aren't your thing, don't stitch the thing. If alphabets aren't your thing, don't stitch that part. Stitch what is. Shoot, Vana, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to stitch that cute little willow tree and call it a day. Speaking of willow trees and sheep, this uh, grab bag was labeled sheep, so that's why I got it. This is Elizabeth's Needlework Designs Gentle Lamb Sampler. Again, I don't, I don't need alphabets, but maybe I could find uh, a saying or something that I could put up there. I just think it's, I just think it's sweet. 
it's precious. Maybe I'll just move this border right down there and call it a day. And I could have a room that I fill with willow trees and sheep and people will come to the old lady house for that. Then I got this. Family Record Samplers, Original Designs by Ellen Chester, and this is from With My Needle. And I'm not going to take it out of the package, I'm sorry, so I'll, I'll do my best to hold down on the glare. But the package has never been opened, so I'm not going to open it. I don't know... Oh, you see that? I don't know if I would stitch that whole thing. But those deer... Those are beautiful. So I will definitely stitch those and I will either do one of two things. I will make an ornament out of them or maybe I will just pick motifs from all of my favorite samplers that I don't necessarily want to stitch the whole thing and I'll hodgepodge them all together and I'll make my own sampler. I could do that too. And this is the last one that I got that I loved. And this is from Hawkins House Reproduction Samplers. It's called Jane, it's either Reiner or Rayner, 1865, a Welsh sampler. And I love the colors. And I love, this is a tree with a little bird. I think it's a bird, birdhouse. I love it. The colors are so pretty. I've never seen a tree that looked like that. So it's unique. So there you go. That's that. And then the other two things that I got that made my $12 totally worth it. I got two books. And I, and I knew they were books when I felt the package. And I was like, I have to get this because I need to know what these books are. Um, so I got this one. This is uh, The Best of Cross Stitch Basics. And it does have patterns in here, but it also, it has a lot of alphabets, a lot of borders, uh, little things for like bookmarks and stuff, which you could totally create into a border. These are cute. Those are, those are page markers. Those are sweet. There's samplers in here for all of my sampler sisters. Um... Uh, I'm trying to find, there was one in here that I was like, that's gorgeous. Little things, big things. I don't see it now. Don't see it. Oh, well. I don't see it. Anyways, it's a great, I mean, it's good. It's good to have, right? Even just for alphabets and spacing and borders and stuff like that. And then the other thing that I got, $2.50, y'all. This book and that book, $2.50. Encyclopedia of Needlework. Retails for $24 something. This was on my wish list in Amazon just because you never know you might want to have a reference and this has information about needlepoint embroidery Bargello you know Bargello is making a big comeback uh, between um, Lori mischievous stitches and uh, Vanna everybody's into Bargello silk ribbon embroidery black work Swedish we weaving which I believe is called Huck Huck weaving um, it's got it all hard anger Look at that. Pretty. And it teaches you step by step. And there's patterns in here for um, for things. But like, I'm going to show this way far away. So it, here's a picture of the stitch. I'm going to hold my hand over the, how do I do this? I don't even know. So there's a picture of the stitch here, what it would look like finished. And then, boop, there's, how to, there's a diagram on how to actually do the stitch nice um, needlepoint tools information about I mean it is an encyclopedia 
threads, all the different kinds of threads that you can use, hoops, um, I don't know, I just, it's awesome. I have a couple of other reference books that I want to get, but this is a great starter for my reference book collection. So, okay, we're over an hour. I did not think I was going to talk for over an hour. I don't even know if this is going to upload. I don't even know if there's enough room in my phone. I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't know how to get it onto YouTube. So, I'm sorry this is so long. Feel free to break it up. Feel free to stop in the middle and never come back. I don't know. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for hanging out with me for an hour. I uh, have enjoyed sharing everything with you because I try to tell this to like my husband and stuff and he's like, yeah, that's nice. He's not really interested in it. Uh, upcoming videos, I think I would like to do um, a longer sort of get to know me video and I'll do maybe a whip update on things that I've worked on and then I could do one where I show you some of my finishes that I've had over the last two years. There's not a ton, but there are some. And um, if you have any other ideas for videos, things you want me to talk about, let me know. I'm I'm game for whatever. As long as as long as you'll have me in this community, I'd like to be here. So I've really enjoyed it. And um, I was trying to think of like something cool to say, you know, like uh, Yvonne the Night Owl Stitcher is like peace out, and um, Mischievous Stitches says love and stitches, y'all, and um, Vanna tells you to stitch all the things and. I just think that's really cute and the only thing I want to do is sort of leave leave you with my wish for you I guess um, until the next time we get together I hope that you find peace in your heart and that you find a, a needle and thread and fabric in hand and get time to stitch because it's good for your soul and it's good for your mind and um, I'll see you, you know, next time, okay? Till next time.